Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. We are told there are none so blind as those that will not see. However, there are times when none can see as clearly as some of those who are blind. After all, isn't it true that most of what we see is not received through the eye, but interpreted by the mind? Of course it is. Consider, when you see somebody's point of view... Just exactly what are you looking at? I came as soon as I could. You shouldn't have come at all. Oh, darling. Don't call me darling where people can hear. PJ was killed last night, and in this kind of situation, they always suspect the man's wife. But, darling, you didn't kill him. Are you crazy? Don't call me darling. Or did you? mystery drama, Second Sight, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It's always a pleasure to watch a professional at work. Arthur Dixon is a professional who is superb at what he does, and what he does best is done in absolute privacy. You see... Arthur's nickname is Fingers, and he opens safes, which belong to other people who did not invite him to exhibit his marvelous dexterity. Arthur is, even now, busily at work. He has just opened the wall safe in the home of a wealthy gentleman named P.J. Genestira. He is about to extract the contents. He is unaware that Mr. Genestira is also in the room, and unfortunately, with a loaded revolver... Hold it! Huh? Freeze! Hey, hey, pal! You wouldn't want to shoot a guy, would you? Stand still! Sure, sure, just don't get nervous. You thought you could open my safe, did you? I didn't think I knew. It's just a tin can. I mean, a guy with your kind of dough, you know, you should have done better for yourself. Don't move! I've got my eye on you. I'm backing up toward my desk. I'm going to lift up the phone and call the police. Hey, 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 don't do that, pal. Don't call the cops. And why not? Uh, give me a break, huh? I said don't move. I, I, I'm just an honest criminal. A what? I'm just doing a day's work. Now, come on, let me go. Man. Absolutely not. There's no harm done. I said don't move. You wouldn't shoot me, pal. Keep away from those doors. You wouldn't shoot me. Don't force You're me. You're a stiff. You're not a real hard guy. I already... I should have... I really should have... P.J.? P.J.? What was that noise? The French doors. What happened to the French doors? The glasses... <gasps> that gun. Please, put it down. You, you, you killed somebody. Yeah, I'd better. Now, now, will you tell me what the happened? The first thing I'd better do before he gets away is to call the police. Before who gets away? The burglar, don't you see? The safe is open. I surprised him. Oh, he can't get very far. Oh, uh, well, what's the difference? He wasn't a bad sort of fellow. Uh, who wasn't? For crying out loud, who are we talking about? How dumb can you get? The burglar! Uh, there, there was a burglar. He got in here. He had opened the safe. Yes, that's what I said. And then he just... Broke through the French doors out onto the patio and, and he got away. I see it finally sunk in. Let's go to bed. Zelda? He broke through those doors and he got away. Yeah, look, don't, don't touch that gun. <laughs> you, you better give it to me. Hey, that's not how you hand a gun to someone. You'd never point it at him. 
Honestly, you are so dumb sometimes. You hand it to him by the... Uh, Zelda. Uh, Zelda, what are you doing? I'm going to kill you, PJ. You, you, you're going to what? Yes, me, stupid Zelda. You will never laugh at me again. You will never call me dumb again. Uh, uh, Zelda. You want to I... know how smart I am, huh? Well, I can kill you and get away with it. Oh. 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 How do you like this dumb little showgirl you married now, huh? How do you like her? Now, I better, I better wipe the fingerprints off the gun and, and just throw it on the floor. And, uh, uh, call the police. Uh, uh, operator? Uh, operator? I, I, I need help. There's been a murder. I'm sorry we have to ask you these questions, Mrs. Ganistera. Oh, it's all right, Lieutenant. I, I, I'm not at all sure I can tell you anything. Whatever you can tell us. Well, we, we had just retired. We were in our bedroom. And he, he said to me, I think I hear a noise downstairs. And I said, it must be one of the servants. And he said, no, it, it was their night off. I'd better go see. Yes? Well, PJ has... But he had a revolver. You see, he, he kept it in the drawer of his night table. And he said, I'm going downstairs. The uh, revolver is the same one that's lying there on the floor? Oh, yes, Lieutenant. And? Uh, well, I, I thought I would call the police myself. But I was so sure that the noise was in his imagination. I should have believed him. And then I heard a shot... And another one. I, I sprang out of bed. I, I ran downstairs and he... Oh, he he was lying right there. There on the floor. And the French doors had been broken open. You, uh, you didn't see anyone? No. Hear anyone? No. Well, I don't want to bother you with anything more tonight. Please, uh, get some rest. <laughs> Yeah, that's him. He's coming down the steps. And he's got a valise. Must be ready to take off. Joe, you and Dick cover us. Phil and I are going to take him. Let's go. Uh, hold it, Artie. Huh? Freeze. Police officers. Hey. Hey, what, what do you guys want? I'm clean. Artie, you got to come downtown with us. What for? First, we're going to read you your rights. And then we're going to talk about some of your most recent activities. You guys are crazy. Artie, you might as well have left a card. That job had your name all over it. And I got an alibi. Sure. Artie, nobody can drill the holes in a safe as small as you do. I'm sorry. A craftsman like you has to be penalized for being so great. Hey, Lieutenant. When you busted out of there, you ran onto the patio and then on some soft ground. You know something? Mm. We've got an impression taken of your shoe. Fits like a glove. And it's got traces of the same mud on it, too. Ah, that's your circumstantial evidence. The bad part is you blew open the safe and he caught you. You grabbed the gun from him. In the fight, it went off. And you killed him. Oh, no, I didn't kill him. The man's dead, Artie. I admit it. I admit I was in the house. Uh, now, we're getting something. Yeah, and I admit that I opened a safe. But I didn't kill him. You didn't. He caught me. And he held a gun on me. But I could see... I could see he wasn't the type of guy who'd shoot. You could see that, huh? Yeah, yeah. You were willing to bet your life on it? I could see he wasn't the type of guy who was used to shooting people, you know. He would have to think. Yes, no. All I needed were those couple of extra seconds to be out of there. I took the chance. Mm -hmm. that, that's all I know. What happened was you grabbed him. That's not what I'm saying. I know. That's what I'm saying. You got the gun away from him. No. And you shot him. Then you wiped your prints off and dropped it on the floor. Artie, do you want to make a statement? I already made my statement. I didn't 
kill him. If that's your statement, Artie, I'm afraid you're going to be stuck with it. Hello, Ben. Jim, come on in. Okay. You uh, get along all right, Jim? My pal here takes first-rate care of me. <laughs> he's a terrific-looking dog, Jim. And he's smarter than I am, too. Uh, I heard you were trying to reach me. Well, I would have come over to see you, Jim. I didn't mean to put you to all the trouble. Hey, I was glad of an excuse to get down to the old place again. See everybody. Uh, um, you know what I mean. You're looking good, Jim. And you're sounding good, Ben. I know you're retired, but, uh... Do you think you could give us a hand? Sure. What can I do? You remember Arthur Dixon. <laughs> what a question. I guess you'll remember him the rest of your life. Yeah. Arthur Fingers Dixon. Yeah. How can I forget? On account of him, I'm... He's uh, in a jam. Yeah, he sure is. I read about it in the papers. Uh, that is, uh, my nephew comes over every afternoon and reads them to me. Uh, you got him for murder. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. He, uh, he wants to see you, Jim. Yeah? What for? He says you're the only cop he can talk to. Yeah, but I'm not a cop anymore. Thanks to him. Jim, we need his confession to wrap it all up in a neat little package. Do you think you could go see, uh, I mean, uh, visit him in his cell? Ben... I'd rather not. Mm. Okay. It isn't like the old days when I could just give an order. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry too, Jim. I, I really should have thought it out before I asked you to do something that would be so painful. Yeah, you should have. Well, Jim, just because you're retired, you know, you shouldn't be a stranger. Drop around. Yeah, um... Uh... <laughs> All right, Ben, all right, all right. You want me to see him? I'll go see him. I'll call you, Bob, when I want to leave, okay? Hey, hey, that's a great-looking dog. I, I, I mean, he's, uh... Get to uh, it, Fingers. Yeah, well, I, uh, I got a lot of nerve asking you to help me. You sure do. Let's get on with the show, huh? Hey, you know, I never had a chance to tell you how sorry I was. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I was crazy to try to get away, but I saw the car parked outside the station house, you know, and the motor was running. We know what happened. Well, I shouldn't have done it, but I, I didn't want to go to jail. I don't have all day, Fingers. You see, I thought I could get away clean, but... When you got into your own car, I just couldn't shake I it. don't want to go through this again. And when I seen you crashing in that lamppost, I, I was going to come back and help you, but I was scared. Besides, I, you see, I thought you was killed, that you, you lost your life. Uh, no, all I lost was my eyesight. Now, let's get down to business. Uh, sergeant, you, you know, you're the only cop I can talk to. I'm not a sergeant anymore, and I'm not a cop either. But go ahead. I'll listen. Tell me how you killed him. No, no, no. I, I didn't kill him. Fingers, don't waste my time. If you don't want me to come here... I want you to help me. Are you out of your mind? I, I know you're sore at me. What kind of a chump do you take me for? Well, look, look I, I'm sorry about the accident, but you know I didn't mean it. I, and besides, you know, you and me, well, we used to like each other. What are you talking about? Look, I was the best safe cracker in the city, and you was the smartest detective on the force. You was out to get me, and I was out to beat you. But there was nothing personal in it, huh? Each one of us was only doing his thing. Hey, man, that's why you got to get me out of this. Why should I? Because you know I didn't kill him. I don't know anything of the kind. Oh, look me in... Uh, I was going to say look me in the eye and say that... But I can't because you can't. Oh, you know I'm not a killer. And you know that I didn't kill him. Yes? How does Sergeant Greenwood know? We know, but that's because we were there. But how would former Detective Sergeant James Greenwood know? And even if somehow he does know, would he be inclined to save Arthur? 
We have some problems to overcome in Act Two. Very often, those who don't like us are in a greater position to influence our lives than those who do. Here we have poor Arthur Fingers Dixon, a safe cracker, and his only hope seems to rest with former Detective Sergeant James Greenwood, who has every just cause to wish him ill. You know I didn't kill him, Sergeant. How do I know? You know. I don't care if you confess or not. They got you nailed to the wall. You were there. Yeah, well, I admit it. The guy surprised you, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you pulled a gun and killed him. No, no, it was his gun. I don't carry a gun. You know that. I don't know anything of the sort. But it was his gun. So it was his gun. You didn't want to get sent up. That's why you grabbed it out of his hand. No. You had to kill him. That ain't what happened. Yeah, well, let me give you the benefit of the doubt. It went off while you were struggling for it. Twice? Like I say, fingers. I wasn't there. Oh, you didn't have to be there. You know how I operate. Who knows better than you? No gun, no knife, no violence. Now, look, if I'm caught, I'm caught. But by the time we plea bargain, I wind up with three to five. And with good behavior, well, you know, I'm back in the street maybe a year and a half. That's because, and only because... I don't lift a finger. Yeah, well, there's a first time for everything. Sarge, please help me. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> the, the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah look, I, I understand your angle, and I don't blame you. Yeah, this is the best revenge you could hope to get. Revenge? Yeah. Well, what, what, well, what else is it? You know that I didn't kill him. You know I couldn't. I want to tell you something, and you don't have to believe it. But you've got your revenge anyhow. Let's say, by a miracle, I licked this rap, huh? Okay? I'm finished. I've been finished ever since you lost... You. Well, anyhow, it did something to me. I lost my edge. I'm not as good as I used to be. The lieutenant says the job was as sweet and as neat as ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I can still do it. Yeah, but with this difference. You see, now I, uh, I make some noise. Now, when did I ever make a sound before, huh? Why, why did the guy come downstairs? Because he heard me. When did anybody ever hear me when I was working, huh? Yours is a very sad story. But this is a world that's full of heartbreak. <laughs> See you around, fingers. Gordon. Yes, I came as soon as I heard. You shouldn't have come at all. Why not, Linda? Because, because, look, uh, let, let, let's step out into the library. That policewoman is out in the hall. Uh, but, darling... Don't I... call me darling where people can hear. No, please don't kiss me. Why not? Someone might be watching outside near the window. Zelda, why are you but so... PJ was killed just last night. And in that kind of situation, the police always suspect a man's wife. But they already have the murderer. It was a remarkable piece of police work. Well, still, we, we, we better be careful. Darling, I know that death is a shock to everyone. But it isn't as if you were in love with him. No. Or were you? I hated him. Oh, how I hated him. That's why. That's why what? That's why I... Well, just without even thinking, I, I saw the chance to, uh... To, uh... Zelda, what are you trying to say? Nothing. Nothing at all. He's gone now. Yes, he's gone. It's scary how you can get an urge all of a sudden. You can't control it. Uh, darling, darling, you are not well. Oh, but I am. I feel great. Now we're, we're free. We're free to do anything we like. Yes, darling, we are free. Don't leave me. Why should I ever want to leave you? You mustn't. You, you can't. I, I won't let you. I did it for you, too. What did you do for me? Zelda, Zelda, are you all right? Oh, yes. Now I'm all right. Right now, I don't have a care in the world. Mm. 
Back so soon, Jim? Yeah. That was quick. Is he willing to make a statement? Uh, Ben, I want to ask you something. Let's say Fingers didn't kill P.J. Ginnistera. What do you mean, let's say he didn't kill him? He was there. Yeah, but for the sake of argument, uh, let's say he didn't do it. Where are we? Where are we? We're at ground zero, square one. Let's say Arthur's clean as far as the uh, killing is concerned. No, no, Jim, we've got him nailed. I'm happy, the chief inspector's happy, the DA's happy. Yeah, but I'm not happy. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm just a broken-down old detective and <laughs> blind into the bargain. And uh, my happiness doesn't mean a thing to anybody. Don't say that, Jim. But uh, you started it. You called me into this thing. So this morning, in effect, I was back in the department doing a detective's job. And if you send me out to do a job, I have to do it all the way. All right, Jim. Uh, see, I know fingers like I know myself. He doesn't fight. But he was caught red-handed. So what? Uh, how long would he sit in jail? Hmm? He's combat-wise. He knows how to pick a lawyer. No. He didn't do it. A man can't go against the habits of a lifetime. All right, maybe he had a partner. The partner gets away. But we still have fingers as an accomplice. And, but now we can give him a chance to make a deal for himself. No good. Fingers never used a partner in his life. Jim, so where do we go from here? Well, we got the man and his wife upstairs in bed. They hear a noise. He says, I'll go down and look. He takes his gun, right? Yeah. A little bit later, she hears the shots. She runs down in the library. There he is, dead on the floor. The gun is laying there beside him. Uh, that's what happened, right? Okay. The gun is clean. No prints on it. Hmm, that makes sense. Fingers didn't want to be caught with it. So he cleaned it off and left it. Big question. He goes downstairs to look. She hears the shots. What is the time interval? In, in, in other words, how long is he gone? According to my notes when I questioned her, she couldn't be sure exactly. Yeah, but she had to give you a ballpark figure. Yeah, just about a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. That, Jim, is why I insist, regardless of how you figure it, Fingers had to do it. Why? Well, if he didn't. We'd have to be talking about the greatest coincidence in the world. Somebody who wants to kill P.J. Ganestera just happens along after Fingers runs away and plugs him. Uh, how about Mrs. Ganestera? Are you crazy? Well, nobody else was around. Jim, I, I want to go along, but I just can't. Let's say P.J. was found shot. The safe wasn't open, and the French doors weren't smashed. There was no sign of a break in entry. Oh, but you're talking about another case. Probe into Mrs. Ginnister's background. See if maybe there wasn't anything doing there on the side. Uh, you haven't done that yet, have you? Jim, there's absolutely no need for that. We've got our man. I don't think so. Are you saying she killed her husband? Why? How? Well... Say Fingers is telling the truth. He breaks away. She comes down, just like she says. She sees the whole thing. She takes his gun and shoots him. Because she knows she's in the clear. She's got a fall guy. But, Jim, why should she want to kill her husband? Isn't, isn't that why we're here? I don't know if I can get the inspector to buy it. Do uh, you buy it, Ben? You know, Jim, I'm sorry I ever called you into this. No, you're not. All we have to do is wrap this up neatly and the chief will grab it. Uh, listen, tell me something. When you got there, where was she? In the library. Uh -huh. Did you ask her if she'd left the room at any time after she found the body? Mm -hmm. She said she hadn't. Uh, what was she wearing? What do you mean? What do you think I mean? Well, she was wearing a a nightgown. Uh-huh. And uh, what else? 
Well, she had a kind of uh, a robe over it and, and slippers. Mm-hmm. So she hears the shots and she runs downstairs. But first, she puts on her robe and slippers. Well, those could be reflex actions, Jim. Sure. Uh, what color was the robe? It was kind of a light red. Why? What color was the nightgown? Oh, come on, Jim. A, a lightish blue. Now, what do you know that we didn't know before? Ben, let's do a background on her. Check out her friends. See if there might be an angle. Jim, our investigation is officially closed. I'd have to justify the assignment of manpower to the inspector. Play along with me, huh? Oh, I want to, Jim, but I have to have something. Isn't it enough that we know Fingers isn't a killer? Hmm? Uh, now that I say it, I, uh, yeah, I can see that it isn't enough. If only there was something, just one little angle to go on. Well, maybe it is there. Uh, listen, could I go out and, uh, <laughs> look, uh, Meanwhile, let's get a head start. Uh, who's the cop that's been stationed out there? A policewoman named uh, Wilcox. Yeah, well, could you arrange to ask her if Zelda Ginnistera has had any interesting visitors? <laughs> is this exactly the way it was, Ben? Nothing in the room has been touched. Uh, would you just describe the place for me? Well, see, it's about uh, 15 feet by 20, oak paneled or some other good wood. You've got a big bay window. You have those French doors. You, uh, you've got a sofa, a small table, uh, an easy chair, a desk. Uh, on the desk. Is there any cloth? Cloth? Or, or maybe a box of tissues. No, I don't uh, see any. Um, inside any of the drawers? I'll see. No, they're locked. Uh, so we can assume he locked his desk at night. Uh, and the key would be upstairs. Uh, what other cloth is there in the room? Well, the sofa and the chairs are made out of leather. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, curtains? Uh, uh, drapes? Well, there aren't any, just blinds. Uh, what you're telling me, then, is uh, that there's not a piece of soft material anywhere in the room, right? Right. But uh, what does it mean? Yeah, and she was wearing a nightgown and a negligee when you came in here. A negligee, yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly it. But, Jim, where does it all get us? And you're sure the negligee was light red and the robe was light blue? You know, you could really get a guy all twisted up. One was red and one was blue. I want them. Her negligee and her nightgown? What for? We may as well just pause here and ask that question ourselves. What does he want with her negligee and nightgown? Especially since he isn't able to see them. Actually, for the veteran puzzle solvers among you, the clue may be apparent. At any rate, you have a couple of minutes to think about it. Then we shall resolve all these matters in Act Three. <laughs> It is a characteristic of wisdom not to do desperate things, said Mr. Thoreau. And yet, our entire society is constantly being buffeted by acts of desperation, which proves that wisdom must surely be in short supply among us. However, we are about to witness an act of wisdom by a former detective sergeant who has been placed in a position where he must see things differently. Lieutenant Cates... Yeah, Officer Wilcox, I wanted to be in touch with you. Uh, tell me, while you were on duty, did Mrs. Ginnister have any visitors? Uh-huh. And what would his name be? Oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, thank you. It was Officer Wilcox. The answer to your interesting visitor question is yes. Who? A guy by the name of uh, Gordon Slater. Good-looking, 30-ish. Hmm. Whereas her husband was 60. The interesting bit of conversation Officer Wilcox overheard is this. He called her darling. And she said, don't call me darling where people can hear. Does that call for a closer look at Mr. Gordon Slater? Mm, why not? Uh, now, there's a housekeeper, you say? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Could I talk to her? I told you already, she wasn't here. She has nothing to say to us. 
Well, let's have a little chat anyhow. Hmm? Okay. Mrs. Conroy, uh, could you come in here for a minute, please? Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Conroy, this is Detective Sergeant Greenwood. He, he is. Uh, Mrs. Conroy, uh, would you say Mr. and Mrs. Ginnistero were, were a happy married couple? Well, what does it matter one way or the other? The burglar is the guilty one. Could you answer my question? Well, personally, I could never see the logic of it. Yes? Well, she was half his age. He was a gentleman of, well, a more or less culture, you know. He was a sister in the chorus line. He met her because he happened to invest in a show she was in. Mm-hmm. Did they quarrel? Well, it was one of those things that just didn't work out. They had nothing in common. I mean, he was always calling her stupid, and she was always talking about it. Oh, I see. Uh, now, the other night, when it happened, she was wearing a blue nightgown and a red negligee. Yes, sir. Uh, what happened to them? Well, I- I've taken them down to be laundered, sir. Mm-hmm. Have they been done yet? Uh, no, sir. Uh, ordinarily, they would have, but there's been all this, uh, this trouble in the house. Uh, do you suppose you could bring them here? Uh, before you do them? Well, yes, sir. Come in. Uh, these are the things you requested, sir. Ah, good. Uh, uh, Mrs. Conroy, examine them for me closely. Well, for what, sir? For dirt. Well, they're never really dirty. I, I do them every day. Oh, wait a minute, Mrs. Conroy. Down at the bottom of the nightgown, there are some uh, very dark smudges. Ben, are you sure? Well, look, I'm... Uh, well, uh, I mean, yes. Well, now, how did they get there? Well, I can't imagine. Well, what could it possibly be? It's uh, just on the nightgown, Ben? Mm, I don't see any on the negligee. Ah, I knew it. What did you know, Ben? Uh... Mrs. Conroy, I'm afraid we'll have to borrow this nightgown for a few hours. Ben, you suppose you could uh, take it down to the lab while I chat with Mrs. Conroy about Mr. Gordon Slater? Come in. Uh, Lieutenant Cates? Uh, he's been called away for a couple of minutes. Well, my name is Gordon Slater. I was told he wanted me to come down to police headquarters. I'm Sergeant Greenwood, his uh, uh, associate. You can talk to me. Uh, About what? Well, for starters, tell me, uh, how long have you and Zelda Ginnistera been having an affair? Uh, Now, just hold on. Uh, Are you going to deny it? What kind of... Let's save your time and the taxpayers' money. (laughs) You know we can investigate and come up with a barrel full of solid evidence. That housekeeper. She shot her mouth off. What did you want her to do? We told her this was murder. Murder? Murder. And that it would uh, be kind of serious for her not to open up. uh, I'm now saying the same thing to you. Murder? But but there was this burglar. He he was the one who shot PJ. Yeah, that's what Zelda says. Well, how can there be any doubt? The thing is open and shut. How, uh, how long has this affair been going on? Uh, <clears throat> well, maybe two years or more. Uh-huh. Was her husband giving her a bad time? <sighs> yes, definitely. Why? Why? Well, I guess he was too old for her. That's, that's what it all started from. Uh, everything else, her being dumb and all that was... Uh... Uh, what about her being dumb? Well, okay. She's dumb. But in a kind of cute way. See, I never minded it, but he did. Uh, how did she feel toward him? She was his wife. Mm-hmm. Was she in love with him? Well, no. Was she a woman who would act violently on impulse? Sergeant, I know something about the law. Now, if you have a legitimate line of questioning... I'm you... just going to say this, and uh, you can react to it any way you like. She hated him. By chance, an opportunity arose where she could kill him. And it would look as if someone else did it. What are you saying? (laughs) Now you're asking me questions. She's angry. She's frustrated. She's in love with you. Are you in love with her? Well, I... Or is this just a pleasant little interlude for you? Uh, 
Well, maybe this means something, maybe not. But when I called on her the next morning, she said some things that sounded strange. Yes? She said, it's scary how you can get an urge all of a sudden, and you can't control it. Yes? And uh, she said, uh, she said, uh, I'll never let you leave me. I did it for you, too. Uh, what does she mean by that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, yes, you do, Mr. Slater. Yes, you do. But, Jim, we have no evidence. I say all we have to do is accuse her and she'll fall apart, Ben. And what if she doesn't? What if she denies everything, calls a lawyer? How do we justify the accusation? She won't. But this whole idea of yours that she's guilty, it's all a theory. Yeah, but it's a good psychological theory. Uh, excuse me. Lieutenant Cates. Yeah. Oh, it's for you, Jim. The lab. Yeah. Yeah, this is green one. Uh-huh. Okay, thanks. Ben, I think we can make a move. Let's pick her up. What have you got? Report from the lab. It'll prove she's the killer. This is Detective Sergeant Greenwood. Oh, how do you do? Sergeant Greenwood has some questions he wants to ask you. Well, sure. Um, I understand you caught the burglar. We did. Oh, well, that, that was just great. Uh, how did you fellas manage to do it? A and so fast. Uh, Mrs. Ginnisterra, every crook has a modus operandi, a method for operating. When you see a familiar one... You know who your perpetrator is. You'd think those fellows would try to change their routines. Uh, yes, but they can't. All of us, I guess, are slaves to our own conventions. Yeah. Well, uh, did, did the burglar confess? Uh, no. Uh, why should he confess? The uh, burglar didn't kill your husband. He, he didn't. No, of course not. Well, then, who did? You... Ah, oh, that's, uh, that's a gag, isn't it? I, I mean, I mean, that's not in good taste. Murder never is. You can't prove it. Mm, I can. Lieutenant, what are you cops trying to pull off here? Who is this guy with his, his seeing-eyed dog? Why are you trying to pass him off as a detective? Uh, I am a detective. I'm going to call my lawyer. You have every right to do that. Where do you come off saying I killed my husband? Do you want to hear how it happened? What you told Lieutenant Cates was true. Up to a point. Your husband heard a noise and went down with his gun to investigate. But you didn't hear any shots. And when you joined him down the library, the burglar had already escaped. Now, uh, you were angry with your husband, and you saw a chance to kill him and get away with it. You picked up the gun and shot him. Twice. No. Then, let me tell you what you did with the gun. It's a lie. You had to work quickly. Someone may have heard the shots. You had to get the call into the police, and you were nervous. You don't go around shooting people every day. You knew you had to wipe off the fingerprints. What could you use? Mm, there was nothing in the room. Absolutely nothing. You know what you did? <laughs> you used the only piece of cloth that was available. A part of your nightgown. You can't prove it. Your nightgown is at the police lab. There were some dark smudges on it. You know what they are? A mixture of oil and fouling from gunpowder particles. Very characteristic. Now, the question you'll have to answer is this. How did this material, which can only have been rubbed off a recently fired revolver, get on your nightgown? Come on, Zelda, it isn't murder one. It wasn't premeditated. You might 
even get temporary insanity. Why did you do it? I should never have married him. But I said, he's a millionaire. You'd think I'd know better. You don't get nothing for nothing in this world. He used to enjoy himself showing me how dumb I was. He'd introduce me as his little dumb Dora. I'd get so mad I could kill him. Uh-huh. And so, so you saw your chance. It was a nice setup. No. No, that didn't happen till after. All I saw was the gun. He asked me to hand it to him, but he had to call me dumb in that icy, nasty voice of his. And before I knew what I was doing, I, I, I knew I was going to kill him. You see, it was only after I did it that I realized it, it, it would look like the burglar was guilty and, and I'd get away with it. It's funny, Jim. I was here when she was wearing the nightgown, and I didn't notice the smudge on it. Yeah, well, that's because you didn't know that you had to look for it. And you knew it was there, Jim, without ever being able to see it. It's uh, no consolation to you, Zelda. But uh, you know what you should have had, and uh, you'd have been home free? <laughs> just, just a couple of pieces of ordinary facial tissue. For want of a nail, that's the old story. For want of some ordinary, everyday item, the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness of Zelda Ginistera will now be severely curtailed for at least the foreseeable future. I shall return in just a very few minutes. Necessity, they say, is the mother of invention. You do a thing best when it must be done or else. And so, when our Sergeant Greenwood lost the use of his eyes, he was forced to learn how to see in a completely different context. When he could no longer see what men and women perform with their hands, he taught himself to see what they perform inside their minds, which is always the deepest and truest vision of all. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Carol Titel, Earl Hammond, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Enjoy this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater.